All right. Um, this is Under the Hood, episode three, intro outro, take one. Hey there. Have you ever clicked the view app button in Studio Pro and wondered how the page you created just moments ago has now appeared in your browser? And what's the difference between native mobile and a responsive app? To find out, let's take a look under the hood. To start off, the browser will load the Mendix front-end JavaScript runtime. And it's the JavaScript runtime which will fetch and load the page definitions from the server. Once the page definitions render, any required data from the server is loaded, for instance, if you have a data view or a grid in your page. And the retrieval is based on the entity definitions created in the domain model. So what technologies are actually being used to accomplish this? The code actually running in your browser is a combination of HTML, JavaScript, and SCSS. Pages are built in the WYSIWYG page editor, where you have access to an array of default widgets which you can use to display your app's data. If you want to create your own custom pluggable widget, you can. Mendix fully supports ReactJS as the base for all of its native mobile and responsive web pluggable widgets. For the front enders out there, we have a wide array of design options. You can write and import your own SCSS files and add design properties to be used on any page element or widget. And if you want to enable the non-designer on your team to build better pages, you can create unique building blocks and snippets with pre-styled components for them to quickly create beautiful user interfaces. In Mendix 9, we have integrated Calypso directly into Studio Pro, meaning it's always monitoring for changes in your app style sheets while developing. And we'll refresh your app in the browser whenever you save the changes in your style sheet. When it comes to handling logic, such as a button click, there are two main ways this is handled. This depends whether the button clicked is triggering a microflow or a nanoflow. Microflows are executed on the server and have access to Java Actions and the Java API. Nanoflows run on the client and they have access to the JavaScript Actions and the JavaScript API. Nanoflows are offline first but can still be used in online and hybrid app pages. But microflows cannot be called directly on a native mobile app as they require a connection to the server. Instead, since Mendix 8, we have a call microflow action for use in nanoflows. Whenever a new page is opened, the rendering starts again, and so does everything else, with the Mendix runtime client keeping track of the page history. I hope you enjoyed this look under the hood at how a Mendix page gets rendered on your screen. If you're looking to get started, you can find out more at academy.mendix.com. And for more details on building pages and widgets, check out this link for more information. That's all for now, and remember, go make it.